Chapter 3. Buttercup's eyes reflect the faint glow of the safety light over the door as he lies in, uh, in the crook of Prim's arm, back on the job, protecting her from the night. She snuggled close to my mother. Asleep, they look just as they did the morning of the reaping that landed me, me uh, 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 in my first games. I have a bed to myself because I'm uh, recuperating and because no one can sleep with me anyway What with, uh, uh, with the nightmares and the thrashing around. After tossing and turning for hours, I finally accept that it will be a wakeful night. Under Buttercup's watchful eye, I tiptoe across the cold tile floor to the dresser. The middle drawer contains my government-issued clothes. Everyone wears the same gray pants and shirt, the shirt tucked in at the waist. Underneath the clothes, I keep the few items I had on me when I was lifted from the arena. My mocking J pin, Peter's token, the gold locket with photos of my mother and Prim and Gail inside, a silver parachute that holds a spile for tapping trees, and the pearl uh, Peter gave me a few hours before I blew up the force field. District 13 confiscated my tube of skin ointment for use uh, 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 in the hospital, and my bow and arrows because... Uh, only guards have clearance to carry weapons. They're they're in safekeeping in the uh, 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 armory. Uh, I feel around for the parachute and I slide my fingers inside until they close around the pearl. I sit back on my bed cross-legged and find myself rubbing the smooth iridescent surface of the pearl back and forth against my lips. For some reason, it's soothing. A cool kiss from the giver himself. Cadmus, Prim whispers. She's awake, peering at me through the darkness. What's wrong? Nothing. Just a bad dream. Go back to sleep. It's automatic. Shutting Prim and my mother out of things to shield them. Careful not to rouse my mother, Prim eases herself from the bed, scoop, scoops a buttercup, and sits beside me. She touches the hand that has curled around the pearl. You're cold. Taking a spirit blanket from the foot of the bed, she wraps it around all three of us, enveloping me in her warmth and Buttercup's furry heat as well. You could tell me, you know. I'm good at keeping secrets, even from Mother. She's really gone then. The little girl with the back of her shirt sticking out like a ducktail, the one who needed help reaching the dishes and who begged to see the frosted cakes in the bakery window. Time and tragedy have forced her to grow too quickly, at least for my tastes into a young woman who stitches bleeding wounds and knows our mother can hear only so much. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to agree to be the Mockingjay, I tell her. Because you want to or because you feel forced into it, she asks. I laugh a little. Both, I guess. No, I want to. I have to. If they will help the rebels defeat Snow. I squeeze the pearl more tightly into my, in my fist. It's just... Peter, I'm afraid if we do win, the rebels will execute him as a traitor. Prim thinks it over. Cadmus, I don't think you understand how important you are to the cause. Important people usually get what they want. If you want to keep Peter safe from the rebels, you can. I guess I'm important. They went to a lot of trouble to rescue me, but took me to 12. You mean I could demand that they give Peter immunity and they'd have to agree to it? I think you could demand almost anything and they'd have to agree with it. Prim wrinkles her brow. Only how do you know <laughs> they'll keep their word? I remember all the lies Hamish told Peter and me to get us to do what he wanted. What's to keep uh, the rebels from uh, um, uh, 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 reneging on the deal? A verbal promise behind closed doors, even a statement written on paper, these could easily evaporate after the war. Their existence or, or uh, validity denied. Any witnesses in, the com in command will be worthless. In fact, they'd probably be the ones writing out Peter's death warrants. I'll need a much larger pool of witnesses. I'll need everyone I can get. It will have to be public, I say. Buttercup gives a flick of his tail that I take as an agree as agreement. I'll make coin announce it in... <laughs> in front of the entire population of 13. Prim smiles. Oh, that's good. It's not a guarantee, but it will be much harder for them to back out of their promise. I feel the kind of relief that follows an actual solution. I should wake you up more often, little duck. 
I wish you would, says Prem. She gives me a kiss. Try to sleep now, all right? And I do. In the morning, I see that at 7 o'clock, breakfast is directly followed by 7.30 command, which is fine since I may as well start the ball rolling. At the dining hall, I flash my schedule, which includes some kind of ID number, in front of a sensor. As, as I slide my tray along the metal shelf before the vats of food, I see breakfast is its usual dependable self. A bowl of hot grain, a cup of milk, and a small scoop of fruit and vegetables. Today, mashed turnips. All of it comes from 13th Underground Farms. I sit at the table assigned to the Everdeens and the Hawthorns and some other refugees and shovel my food down, wishing for seconds, but there are never seconds here. They have nutrition down to a science. You leave with enough calories to take you to the next meal. No more, no less. Serving size is based on your age, height, body type, health, and amount of physical labor required by your schedule. The people from 12 are already getting slightly larger portions than the natives of 13 in an effort to bring us up to weight. I guess bony soldiers tire too quickly. It's working, though. In just a month, we're starting to look healthier, par particularly the kids. Gail sets his tray beside mine, and I try not to stare at his turn of uh, too pathetically because I really want more and he's already too quick to slip me his food. Even though I turn my attention to nearly neatly folding my napkin, a spoonful of turnip slop, slops into my bowl. You've got to stop that, I say, but since I'm already scooping up the stuff, it's not too convincing. Really, it's probably illegal or something. They have very strict rules about food. For instance, if you don't finish something and want to save it for later, you can't take it from the dining hall. Apparently, in the early days, there was some uh, 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 incident of food hoarding. For a couple of people like Gail and me, who have been in charge of our family's food supply for years, it doesn't sit well. We know how to be hungry, but not how to be told how to handle what provisions we have. In some ways, District 13 is even more controlling than the capital. What can we do? They've already got my communicuff, says Gail. As I spray my bowl clean, I have an inspiration. Hey, maybe I should make that a condition of being the Mockingjay. Bet I can feed you turnips, he says. No, but we can hunt. That gets his attention. We'd have to give everything to the kitchen, but still we could. I don't have to fish because he knows. We could be above ground, out in the woods. We could be ourselves again. Do it, he says. Now is the time. You could ask for the moon, and they'd have to find some way to get it. He doesn't know that I'm already asking for the moon by demanding they spare Peter's life. Before I can decide whether or not to tell him, a bell signals the end of our eating shift. The thought of facing coin alone makes me nervous. What are you scheduled for? Gail checks his arm. Nuclear history class. Where, by the way, your absence has been noted. I have to go to command. Come with me, I ask. All right, but they might throw me out after yesterday. As we go to drop off our trays, he says, You know, you better put Buttercup on your list of demands, too. I don't think the concept of useless pets is well known here. Oh, oh, they'll find him a job. Tattoo it on his paw every morning, I say. But I make a mental note to include him for Prim's sake. By the time we get to the command, to command, Coin, Plutarch, and all their people have already assembled. The sight of Gale raises some eyebrows, but no one throws him out. My mental notes have become too jumbled, so I ask for a piece of paper and a pencil right off. My apparent interest in the proceedings, the first I've shown since I've been here, takes them by surprise. Several looks are exchanged. Probably they have some extra special lecture planned for me, but instead, Coin personally hands me the supplies, and everyone waits in silence while I sit at the table and scrawl out my list. Buttercup. Hunting. Penis immunity. Announced in public. This is it. Probably my only chance to bargain. Think. What else do you want? I feel him standing at my shoulder. Gil, I add to the list. I don't think I can do this without him. The headache's coming on and my thoughts begin to tangle. I shut my eyes and start to recite silently. My name is Katniss Everdeen. I am 17 years old. My home is District 12. I was in the Hunger Games. I escaped. 
but Capital hates me. Peter was taken prisoner. He is alive. He is a traitor, but alive. I have to keep him alive. The list. It seems too. It still seems too small. I should try to think bigger beyond our current situation, where I am of, of the utmost importance to the future, where I may be worth n- nothing. Shouldn't I be asking for more for my family, for for the remainder of my people? My skin itches with the ashes of the dead. I feel the sickening impact of the skull against my shoe. The scent of blood and roses stings my nose. The pencil moves across the page on its own. I open my eyes and see the wobbly letters. I kill Snow. If he's c- captured, I want the privilege. Plutarch gives a discreet cough. A- about done there? I glance up and notice the clock. I've been sitting here for 20 minutes. Fake isn't the only one with attention problems. Yeah, I say. My voice sounds hoarse, so I clear my throat. Yeah, so this is the deal. I'll be your mocking jay. I wait so they can make their sound of re- sounds of relief, congratulate, slap one another in the back. Coin stays an impassive as, as impassive as ever, watching me unimpressed. But I have some conditions. I smooth out the list and begin. My family gets to keep our cat. My tiniest request sets, sets off an argument. The capital rebels see this as a, a, non-ish, as a non-issue of, of course I can keep my pet, while those from just from 13 spell out what extreme difficulties this presents. Finally, it's worked out that we'll be moved to the top level, which has the luxury of an 8-inch window above ground. Buttercup may come and go to do his business. He will be expected to feed himself. If he misses curfew, he will be locked out. If he causes any security problems, he'll be shot immediately. That sounds okay. Not so different from how he's been living since we left. Except for the shooting part. If he looks too thin, I can slip him a few entrails, provide my next re- uh, provide my next request is allowed. I want to hunt with Gale out in the woods, I say. This gives everyone pause. We won't go far. We won't we'll use our own bows. You can have the meat for the kitchen, adds Gale. I hurry on before they can say no. It's just I can't breach sh- shut up shut up here like a I would get better, faster, if uh, I could hunt. Plutarch begins to explain the drawbacks here, the dangers, the extra security, the risk of injury, but Coin cuts him off. No, let them. Give them two hours a day, deducted from their training time, a quarter mile radius, with communication units and tracker anklets. What's next? I skim my list. Gail, I need him with me to do this. With you how? Off, ca- off camera, by your side at all times? Do you want him presented as your new lover? Coin asks. She hasn't said this with any particular malice. Quite the contrary, her words are very matter of fact, but my mouth still drops open in shock. What? I think we should continue the current romance. A quick defection from Pina could cause the audience to lose sympathy for her, says Plutarch, especially since, since they she, since they they think she's pregnant with, with his child. Agreed. So on screen, Gil can simply be pr- portrayed as a fellow rebel. Is that all right? Says Quine. I just stare at her. She, she repeats herself impatiently. For Gail, would that be sufficient? We can always work him in as your cousin, says Fulvia. We're not cousins, Gail and I say together. Right, but we should probably keep it up for appearances sake on camera, says Plutarch. Off camera, he's all yours. Anything else? I'm rattled by the turn in the the conversation. The implications that I could so readily dispose of Pita that I'm in love with Gail, that the whole thing has been an act. My cheeks begin to burn. The very notion that I'm devoting any thought to who I want presented as my lover, given our current circumstances, is demeaning. I let my anger... propel me into my greatest demand. When the war is over, if we've won, Peter will be pardoned. Dead silence. I feel Gail's body tense. I guess I should have told him before, but I wasn't sure how he'd respond. Not when, not when it uh, involved Peter. 
No form of punishment will be inflicted, I continue. A new thought occurs to me. The same goes for the other captured tributes, Johanna and uh, 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 Inaberia. Frankly, I don't care about Inaberia, the vicious District 2 tribute. In fact, I dislike her, but it seems wrong to leave her out. No, says Coin flatly. Yes, I shoot back. It's not their fault you abandoned them in the arena. Who knows what, what, uh, what the capital's doing to them? They'll be tried with other war criminals and treated as the tribunal sees fit, she says. They'll be granted uh, immunity. I feel myself rising from my chair, my voice full in resonance. You will personally pledge this in front of the entire population in, of District 13 and the remainder of 12. Soon, today, it will be recorded for future generations. You will hold yourself and your government responsible for their safety, or, or, or uh, you'll find yourself another mocking jay my words hang in the air for long moments that's her i hear fulvia hits the plutarch right there with the costume gonna fire in the b background just a hint of smoke yes that's what we want says plutarch under his breath I want to glare at them, but I feel it would be a mistake to turn my attention from coin. I can see her tallying the cost of my ultimatum, weighing it against my possible worth. What do you say, President? asked Plutarch. You could issue an official pardon, given the circumstances. The boy, he's not even of age. All right, coin says finally, but you better perform. I'll perform when... when uh, when well, you've made the announcement, I say, call a National Security Assembly during reflection today, she orders. I'll make the announcement then. Is there anything left on your list, Katniss? My papers crumbled into a ball in my right fist. I find the sheet against the table and read the rickety letters. Just one more, th one more thing. I kill Snow. For the first time ever, I see the hint of a smile on the president's lips. When the time comes, I'll flip you for it. Maybe she's right. I certainly don't have a sole claim against Snow's life, and I think I can count on her getting the job done. Fair enough. Coin's eyes to flicker to her arm, the clock. She, too, has a schedule to adhere to. I'll leave her in your hands then, Plutarch. She exits the room, followed by her team, leaving only Plutarch, Fulvia, Gale, and myself. Excellent, excellent. Plutarch sinks down, elbows on the table, rubbing his eyes. You know what I miss more than anything? Coffee. I ask you, would it be so unthinkable to have something to wash down the gruel and turnips? We didn't think it would be quite so rigid here, Fulvia explains to us as she massages Plutarch's sh shoulders. Not in the higher ranks, or at least there would be the option of a... A little side action, says Plutarch. I mean, even 12 had a black market, right? Yeah, the hob, says Gail. It's where we traded. There you see, and look how moral you two are. Virtually incorruptible, Plutarch sighs. Oh, well, wars don't last forever, so glad to have you on the team. He reaches a hand out to the side where Fulvia is already extending a large sketchbook bound in black leather. You know in general what we're asking of you, Katniss. I'm aware you have mixed feelings about participating. I hope this will help. Plutarch slides the sketchbook across to me. For a moment, I look at it suspiciously. Then curiosity gets the better of me. I open the cover to find a picture of myself standing straight and strong in a black uniform. Only one person could have designed the outfit at first class utterly... Uh, um, uh, 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 utilitarian as, as, as second a work of art. The swoop of the helmet, the curve of, to the breastplate, the slight fullness of the sleeve that allows the white folds under the arms to show. In his hands, I am again a mockingjay. Senna, I whisper. Yes, he made me promise not to show you this book until you, you decide to be the mockingjay on your own. Believe me, I was very tempted, says Plutarch. Go on, flip through. I turn the pages slowly, seeing each detail of the uniform, the carefully tailored layers of body armor, the hidden weapons in the boots and belts, the special reinforcements over my heart. On the final page, 
Under a sketch of my mocking Jay pin, Sin has written, I'm still betting on you. When did he? My voice fails me. Let's see. Well, uh, 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 after the quarter quell announcements, a few weeks before the games, maybe, there are not only the sketches, we have your uniforms. Oh, and BT's got something really special waiting for you down the armory. I won't spoil it by hinting, says Plutarch. You're going to be the best dressed rebel in history, says Gail with a smile. Suddenly, I realize he's been holding out on me. Like Senna, he's wanted me to, to make this decision all along. Our plan is to launch an airtime assault, says Plutarch, to make a series of what we call propose, propose, uh, uh, which is short for uh, propaganda spots featuring you and broadcast them to, to the entire population of uh, Panem. How? The capital has sole control of the broadcast, says Gail, but we have BT. About 10 years ago, he essentially re redesigned the underground network that transmits all the programming. He thinks there's a reasonable chance it can be done. Of course, we'll need something to air. So, Cadis, the studio awaits your pleasure. Plutarch turns it to his assistant. Fulvia, Plutarch and I have been talking about how on earth we can pull this off. We think that it might be best to build you, a rebel leader, from the outside, in. That is to say, let's find the most stunning Mockingjay look possible and then work your personality up to deserving it, she says brightly. You already have a uniform, says Gail. Yes, but, sh but, she is scar but is she scarred and bloody? Is she glowing with the fire of rebellion? Just how gr grimy can we make her without d disgusting people? At any rate, she has to be something. I mean, obviously this. Fulvia moves in on me quickly, framing my face with her hands. Won't cut it. I jerk my head back reflexively, but she's already busy gathering her things. So with that in mind, we have another little surprise for you. Come, come. Fulvia gives us a wave, and Gil and I follow her and Plurich out into the hall. So well intended and yet so insulting, Gil whispers in my ear. Welcome to the capital. I mouth back, but Fulvia's words have no effect on me. I wrap my arms tightly around the sketchbook and allow myself to feel hopeful. This must be the right decision, if Senna wanted it. We board an elevator and Plutarch checks his notes. Let's see. It's compartment 3908. He presses a button marked 39, but nothing happens. You must have to key it, says Fulvia. Plutarch pulls a key attached to a thin chain from under his shirt and inserts it into a slot I hadn't noticed before. The door slides shut. Ah, there we are. The elevator descends 10, 20, 30 plus levels farther down than I ever knew District 13 went. It opens on a wide white corridor lined with red doors, which look almost decorative compared to the gray ones on the upper floors. Each is plainly marked with a number. Uh, 3,901, 3,902, 3,903. As we step out, I glance behind me to watch the elevator close and see a metallic gray slide into place uh, over the regular doors. When I turn, a guard is materialized from one of the rooms at the far end of the corridor. A door swings silently shut behind him as he strides toward us. Plutarch moves to meet him, raising a hand in greeting, and the rest of us follow behind him. Something feels very wrong down here. It's more than the reinforced elevator, or the claustrophobia of being so far underground, or the caustic smell of antiseptic. One look at Gail's face and I can tell he senses it, senses it as well. Good morning. We are just looking for, Plutarch begins. You had the wrong floor, said the guard abruptly. Really? Plutarch double checks his notes. I've got 3908 written right here. I wonder if you could just give a call up to. I'm afraid I have to ask you to leave now. Assignment discrepancies can be addressed at the head office, says the guard. It's right ahead of us. Compartment 3908. Just a few steps away. The door, in fact, all the doors seem incomplete. No knobs. They must swing free at hinges like the one. Uh, 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 the guard appeared through. 
Where is that again? asked Fulvia. You'll find the head office on level seven, said the guard, extending his arms to corral us back to the elevator. From behind door uh, 3900 a comes a sound, just a tiny with whimper, like something a cow dog might make to avoid being struck, only all too human and familiar. My eyes meet Gales for just a moment, but it's long enough for two people who operate the way we do. I, I let his sketchbook fall at the guard's feet with a loud bang. A second after he leans down to retrieve it, Gale leans down too, intentionally bumping heads. Oh, I'm sorry, he says with a slight laugh, catching the guard's arms as if to steady himself, turning him slightly away from me. That's my chance. I dart around the distracted guard, push open the door marked 3908, and find them, half-naked, bruised, and shackled to the wall. My prep team.